Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do we combat overwhelming ex exhaustion when we come into these talks despite our desire and our fighting the tiredness? Is something trying to take us down? Yeah, to knock you out because the tajalli is not easy to carry, it's very heavy energies that are coming to uplift the soul. But that at the same time knocks the physicality and the body out because the body can't handle it and the soul has to receive it so it puts the body to sleep. That's why then it's recommended to have coffee, tea and to come on a light stomach. If you plan in, in, in indulging an immense amount of food right before zikr you will be sleeping. So you come on a light stomach with teas and coffee and keep yourself to be energized and ready to be energized so that your body can accompany you on this journey of energy. Otherwise if you give the body like a horse a whole bunch of food, a whole bunch of snacks and then what happens as soon as you want to race your horse falls asleep is out. So yeah, by identifying these energy nights and energy practices and like what we said for Ramadan that eat light when you were breaking so that you can pray the taraweeh with energies and then eat for your after taraweeh prayers then eat what you want and knock yourself out. But anytime you're about to do spiritual practices keep a light stomach and coffee and tea and that's why coffee was invented. That they were praying and using it for tahajjud, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. How would one know when it's necessary to be on? In spiritual practice. That when you're going to do your meditation, you want to do your connection during the zikr. And uh, you want to do your muraqabah, that's a time in which you're asking for energy to come, your ability to come, your understanding to come. Everything else is off. So when talking with people keep your energy off so that you're not trying to give guidance and, and give sobats and talks, just keep your energy off and be humble. At work keep your energy off, with your family keep your energy off. So that everyone sees you as a normal person. So Prophet described on a bashar I'm a human like you. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. So he's the exemplar of perfected character. When Allah describes khuluqul azim, you're of a magnificent character. If these people knew that you're owner of the universe they would be astonished. As a result of the humility of Prophet they didn't want to show any of these miracles. The kingdom is Prophet ﷺ's ownership but yet he allowed Sayyidina Sulaiman to show it why? Because he says, it's enough for dalil. So if somebody has a brain and they say, how you say all these things about Prophet Say, well then are you no, must not be a Muslim because you think the Prophets of Bani Israel had more power than Prophet the, the ulama of this nation are the inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. Forget about Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet described, what are you talking about? My ulama, my scholars, they inherit the stations of the Prophets of Bani Israel. What does that mean? That what they knew, what secrets they knew, what miracles they knew, the ulama of this nation have that. 
Prophet station beyond understanding but because of the humility allowed other Prophets to show the miracles. Look they can talk to the birds, they can command their whole nation to fly on a carpet, they command all the wind, he can hear all the sound of the ants. This is a Prophet of Bani Israel, it's nowhere in comparison to the station and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's why Allah has it in the Qur'an, not just to fill a chapter but to give the dalil and the proof of the, the kingdom and the authority of the kingdom. That your king is a mighty king and he gives by examples all these authorities that everything, everything from heavens and all the earth and seven layers below it are under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad in entire universes and galaxies, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh, how can one effectively implement this teaching in the business world? The conditions of behavior are different. Humility and silence are considered weakness. Yeah, but the business world then is something different because that's your dunya. But if you don't have an, a connection in which you have a strong spiritual connection and in that connection all of its training, all of its understanding to give you that madad and support so that what you do in the business world you're not required to play according to the rules of the business world. So that, that's something completely different and remember that Prophet encouraged for us to be businessmen, never encouraged for us to be employees. So this is a big difference. When you're an employee you're bound by somebody, they tell you how to dress, how to act, how to conduct yourself. But the companions and the example of the companions was what? They're all businessmen, merchants, traders, why? Because then there's no boss over you other than Allah and His Rasul So it's highly encouraged for people to do business to conduct themselves in, in business activities as merchants and traders and, and to do what they can so that they're not bound to be employed by somebody and controlled by somebody. But either way they do their meditation, they conduct their connection and as a result of that connection they have many intuitions that help them in work and in business and environments. And their character saves them from tremendous grief that as soon as they go into associations of work they know when to stay silent, they know when they have inspirations for guidance, for purposes and, and different uh, business meetings. So many different realities come from wise people, even in business they recognize somebody who's smart and somebody who's wise. And the system is rigged for people who go to school and then to college is not to produce businessmen. They train you to memorize to be a good employee and servant of somebody. But Islamic teaching and the way and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is not that. You're not supposed to just memorize and listen to their facts and be trained to be an employee but be trained on how to be a merchant, a businessman, how to conduct a business, how to run a business so that the, the sky is the limit for you because Allah give you what Allah wants to give you based on your ability, your piety, your good character inshaAllah. So many, many realities in that question inshaAllah. If you do business you can be a consultant, so many different forms of business now. Just think of it, how, how true it is. The greatest businesses now actually they don't run anything, right? The largest retailer on earth doesn't have a single store, 
So they were businessmen and they recognized they can do business better than the guy who has a store. So they put all his things online. So Amazon now is the largest retailer on earth with not a single store. The largest taxi company on earth right now doesn't own a single car, right? But before everybody owned a car. So there's so many business opportunities when people meditate and contemplate and their heart becomes enlightened, Allah inspires them before these things happen. That you have many ways to, to operate from other people's sort of uh, stores and, and products. They're running the largest cab company without a single car. Pretty soon those cars will be self-driven. And they'll be the largest movement of, of automobiles with not a single driver in them. The Teslas and Ubers will be all Tesla. So these huge, huge organizations are being made and they don't have a single store, they don't have a, even a single car but they're using somebody else's car. So why means they were sharp businessmen. The nation was like that until these Wahhabis came, they were all traders. All merchants all over the earth they were trading and as a result they were everywhere. This Columbus didn't find anything, this is the biggest lie that will be told to you. The Muslims were here first, Khalif Fonya was from the Khalifa and the Muslim nations had already been established in this region by traders and Moors and, and the Muslim traders from around the world were trading. So no, the haqqaiq of Islam and, and the strength and power and the wealth of the Islamic nation. But shaitan had a plan to destroy that light and enslave them and enslave their minds. But Prophet didn't have that, he envisioned for his nation to be powerful and strong. That after the Jummah they were encouraged to be merchants and they would go out and begin to trade. So Islamic uh, archi uh, what is it, architecture, all of it was designed to encourage and enhance the, the business of people inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Nurjan. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. When a person's eyes turn black in moments of bad character or rage, what does that mean? Demonic possession. I've seen that in movies. <laughs> Not turn black. <laughs> Means when your the white of your eye goes and you become like a, a demon eyes, this, this is not a good sign. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think that happens on, uh, on any type of normal basis. So the eyes are the eyes, when you become enraged your color gets red, your, your blood is flowing. But for eyes to change that's something else, that's an energy that coming into people and their eyes become like cat eyes and this is a demonic possession or, or the jinn, there's a very strong jinn inside an individual and it changes. This is in our talks from the jinn realities that this 90% of people now are, are occupied by foreign entities and those entities are not stable entities. You know angelic power is like water, very stable. Jinn power is unstable, unstable people are overwhelmed by the jinn energy within them, right? So imagine your life you have like gas and very flammable, uh, any type of spark that thing is all over the place. So that's the danger is that uh, when the population gives themselves and now they become sort of inhabited by these foreign beings that are very fiery in nature, explosive character. As a result of their angers and their explosive character they can't hold their disguise. So we've shown the videos on those people in which they get angry all of a sudden their eyes start to change, they get too excited and you can see that their, their being showing through the, the illusion of their flesh. 
So they're not able to hold their false identity when they have too much excitement either anger or happiness or joy. They lose their ability to cloak themselves. And those that are occupying within people, the people have less and less ability to control their emotions. Lunacy and lunatic like that. It's actually a being inside the person making them do and say and emotional and all, all over the place. But in the last days they become more and more violent because the nature of those creatures are violent and dirty and bad character and they begin to have the same appearance. They begin to have a dirty nature, a, a very vulgar character and, and a, a bad sort of energies. So that becomes important in the understanding of the last days when they describe that 90% uh, of people now are inhabited by something. And that thing is what is driving their emotions, their anger, their rage, the bad desires, bad appetites, bad foods. So these are not the, the human characteristics anymore, paradise realities are not like that. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam The prostration in the world of light to Adam alayhi salam, was it to Adam alayhi salam or to Alif Dal Mim? Is it SMC plus? Trying to ask like these super loaded questions. Yeah. The prostration for Adam salam was the knowledge. So it was a prostration of ihtiram that the realm of this light was veiled. When Prophet gave hint of it that I was a Rasul. Messenger of Allah before Adam was created. So means that he represented Allah in the world of light and the angels had not yet seen him. And as a result they understood the light, they understood the realities of that light because nobody sees Allah, they hear Allah behind a veil. So all of a sudden a creature appears, Sayyidina Adam salam, with these lights and these knowledges. As a result of that light and knowledge shining out, the angels went into sujood as a Divinely light. They went into prostration for respect and everywhere Adam went they kept making prostration because of their their ihtiram and respect for that Muhammadan light that was coming. Because that knowledge was a drop of Prophet's reality that was given. It means that who taught Adam the names, isma kullaha? In haqqaiq Prophet taught Sayyidina Adam because Sayyidina Moses, Isa, Adam none of them knew Allah, they're behind the parda. So this is a part of their marifah. So Prophet taught these realities to Sayyidina Adam salam. And when Allah put that light of Muhammad and Rasulullah into the forehead of Sayyidina Adam, then everything went into creation. Everyone, everything was always in prostration from that reality. So this is a, was a deep reality, I think believe the light was in the, the back then the angels were continuously making sujood and the light was in the fingers and then Sayyidina Adam asked for the light to be where he could see it. And as a result he would see the light and kiss his thumbs to put that light within his eyes. 
Because everywhere he was walking everything was going into sujood and prostration because of the Muhammadan light in their realms that it was entering. It has a deep reality of Sayyidina Adam And the name of Sayyidina Adam it denotes that, that this is a, a gift from Allah to dunya and it's a Muhammadan reality. So Adam is a, is a gift from the alif that has to come to dunya and manifest through dunya and it is a part of the Muhammadan kingdom and the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. And that what angered shaitan because that was not his reality, that he was expecting that he would be the, the vessel or the, the container of such a reality but describes then his marifah was not strong enough to know that he wasn't even dealing with Allah Because if he knew that he was dealing with Prophet he would not have thought that he is the one. So that describes also a reality towards shaitan not knowing who he was addressing or knowing the Divine reality and as a result of his nafs and desires and himself wanting to be the Khalifa then the anger of finally seeing the Khalifa and the Muhammadan light emanating from the representative of Allah Can you please tell us uh, as a woman what is the sunnah of Hazrat Fatima Zahra salam, as we can carry as a barakah in the last days? The sunnah was to follow Prophet means that to read on her life or even the hadith of Prophet is the the love and the respect she had for Sayyidina Muhammad and the love and respect she had for Imam Ali So the good manners, good character that's what the tariqah teaches because it's all connected to their hearts. So whatever you're learning from the tariqah is their sunnah, there's no two, it's but one. The tariqahs are the schools of manners from these great souls. So that to have respect, have good character, to keep the way of the husband, to keep the honour of the husband, all of the characteristics that we don't see today. So whatever you see in social media do the exact opposite. Whatever you see of uh, social media teaching know that it's completely false and wrong and it's the way of shaitan and the way of jahannam. So to keep the honour of the husband, keep the way of the husband, keep the respect of the husband, to stand guard, stand silent and keep uh, the presence is a great battle against the nafs. And shaitan all that shaitan wants is to reverse the roles in this world, to teach women that, no you should have a nafs and you should go out and be a man. So we described in other talks all of these realities. So how, how to destroy a family, tell the kids what? Put them in a room and don't put them in your room to grow up. So teach them to scream themselves to bed, why? So the bond of the child and the mother breaks. Then tell the woman, you're a great person you know, you should be paid the same amount, you should actually go and work. Instead of cleaning your home and feeding your home, go clean somebody else's home and feed them and get paid for it. So then the woman said, huh this sounds smart for me, I'm gonna go out and work. So then now the woman's out of the house, the man by his nature has to go out of the house to work, then nobody's raising the kids. 
and that's exactly what they wanted. They said, let us disorient them and reorient your children, we will teach your kids. And then they break down the entire structure of civilization and the heavenly realm, the heavenly guidance. When Mawlana Shaykh would describe, no the heavenly realm and the barakah of the home is not that, right? But if you increase your desires then they need two incomes, well lower your desires so that you can suffice with one income. And as a result the barakah of raising your children, your sustenance will last, your food will last, all of these things will open to the system. But shaitan puts in a system, make them have desires. So as soon as they're all watching television, we want all these things, well then go out and get a job and you can help pay for it and that becomes in the system the woman is out working amongst people and the inappropriate contact and nearness to other people and then divorce and problems and battles and, and all of this system is a satanic system, it's not the heavenly system. And it all has a purpose was to break everything down and come against the commands of Allah on what causes peace and unity and tranquility. So that every home now that is doing what it does has no tranquility, has no peace and has no unity. So whatever they listen to it definitely didn't work and 90% is all divorce and separations. There's no peace, there's no tranquility and there's definitely no unity. So the way of Sayyidatina Fatima Zari Salaam is the teachings that she's inspiring for the tariqahs. Is to keep the adab, keep the manners, keep the way of uh, being at home, keep to raising your children in tariqah and in good manners and good character. And what we talked about last night, to spend time teaching the children good manners so that when they go out people can see your kids are trained. They don't talk back, they don't talk loud, they know how to conduct themselves. I know every parent trained their kids on how to go to library. Right? It's extremely embarrassing if your kid comes to the library, the librarian throws them out, right? So the masjid is, is a thousand times more severe. They should have somebody in a masjid that anytime someone talks throw them out. Just come up to him, today you have to go home, get up and go. But they don't care because they, they want to show rudeness to Allah and then they want to show a politeness for the library. Why? So means Prophet brought all of these for us that manners is from childhood, that teach them manners, keep them to be humble, keep the goodness of character. That was the struggle for the family, that was the struggle for the mother. The mother taught them realities, the mother taught them manners, the mother taught them all of these good characteristics inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can we help people that are inhabited by these creatures you just spoke about? Can you help them? <laughs> Get a shaykh, do your muraqabah, wear your taweez and hope they don't jump into you. Right? Because they're looking for a home. If you take them out of a home means now they're homeless. What happens? They're going to jump into you. That's why people busy themselves fixing themselves. So, so, so solidify your own home. You have your ta'weez, you have your spiritual practices, you have your energy, all of that and pray for Allah's grace to dress you and bless you. So it's important that each person take care of themselves, build themselves and uh, inshaAllah pray for the best. But if we busy ourselves going around trying to help people, most likely as a result of doing that we lose our connection for ourselves, we lose the focus on building ourselves and eventually you get zapped or you become a part of a bad character group of people which they go out into the parks and they yell at people about their religion and they, they begin to exhibit the satanic characteristics.
although they think they're doing something pious. So shaitan fools pious people with acts of piety, right? Doesn't have them smoking crack, he makes them to do da'wah but in a vulgar obnoxious way in which angers Allah and has absolutely no benefit and probably 20 people run from Islam as a result of it. Because Allah said in Qur'an, don't talk harshly lest they talk harshly about what you believe. So we see these people they talk very bad rough and then that person turns around and starts saying horrific things about Allah and Prophet It's exactly what Allah warned in Qur'an, don't do that. You speak a harsh word with somebody that's their belief. If you do that they're going to say a harsh word about what you believe, now you're in a big sin because this person now is, is cursing uh, what you believe. So means he, shaitan fools people in acts of piety. The, the real easy ones then you know they, they do bad things but the tougher ones he comes and fools them on thinking that what they're doing is good and pious. Breaking a jama'ah, big one. You have a jama'ah and somebody come and just want to come and make a fitna and break the group up. So that, that, that's just you know, it's not working for Rahman, that works for shaitan. So you saw that in all the masjids, you have 30, 40 people, knives and then shaitan whispering to them, let's go build our own masjid. Then they go next door and they build the masjid, now they went from 40 people to 20, 20. Then they built another one, then they went to 10, 10. Then they built another one and there's 5, 5 until shaitan will be happy when there's what? 40 masjids with one person in there because each one wants to be the president of the council. Each one wants to be the, the imam that will speak and before you know they're not masjids, they're just selfish centers of, uh, of themselves. So shaitan fools people with perceived images of piety and good actions. So it's best to alhamdulillah under guidance is how to maneuver around satanic influence and the nafs, nafsani desires. So Allah subhanahu wa bika rabbal izzat amin yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Shukratiya Surah Kareem. Ameen. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. InshaAllah bil niyyah. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.